Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Elisa Shanks. I run the on-campus counseling center at Colorado Christian University. And today um, we're going to talk a little bit about helping your students succeed, both letting go and still being there. So, oops, and I didn't apparently change the date on my front slide, <laughs> changed everything else. So, um, welcome to CCU. As you guys know, one of our missions is that we offer exemplary academics in the Rocky Mountain region rooted in the grace and truth of Christ. So let me tell you a little bit about me. Um, I am a licensed clinical psychologist. I've been licensed here in the state of Colorado since 2004. Um, I went to graduate school in the late 90s and studied at Biola University's Rosemead School of Psychology. While I was out there, I developed a love of university mental health. So um, I have basically devoted my career to college students and mental health. I worked for three years at the Biola Counseling Center. And then my first job after graduate school was at the University of Colorado at Boulder. And I worked there for a total of 10 years from 01 to 2011. And then I started at CCU in the fall of 2017. So um, I'm running the on-campus counseling center. We offer individual therapy, group therapy, couples therapy, roommate mediations, things like that to help our students um, be strong and healthy and overcome some of the pain from their past and direct them towards God for their healing. So that's a little bit about me. Now let's talk about what we're talking about today. Um, I also have to warn you that this used to be a 45 minute to an hour presentation and um, for the sake of you not sitting in front of Zoom all day every day, we've dropped it to about 15 to 20 minutes. So we're gonna cram this in. We're gonna talk about letting go and still being there, engaging with this transition from um, adult to child to adult to adult. We're going to talk a little bit about the stages of parenting. Um, there are two great blogs that we're going to briefly cover. Prepare the child for the road, not the road for the child. And our, as our kids grow up, us parents need a life. Those are both by um, Carrie Kubes and Kampakis, and um, I really like her perspective. We're going to talk a little bit about communication and then a hint about what we do offer in terms of mental health care on campus at CCU. So, um, I wish we were all together in the event center talking about this and you could raise your hands and tell me who you are and what you're doing, but we're not able to do that this year. So I want you to think about, um, obviously, how many of you are sending your first child to college, which is one developmental stage. Which of you are sending your last or only child to college? Your first and last could be the same. And how many of you are a little worried about this transition? So um, are you worried about yourself? Are you worried about stu your students? Are you worried about your marriage? Are you worried about everybody? So let's think about um, where some of those thoughts and concerns are coming from. So I love this. I hope you can see it on my screen here. We have first day of school. The mom is um, pulling the child off the tree to get them to the school bus. And then first day of college, the mom has her ankles linked around that tree and is holding on to her student who doesn't seem very concerned about his departure. So um, I think this is a great cartoon. And I got this as a blessing from one of my um, what a brother-in-law as they were taking kids to college their counseling center director posted this and he wanted to share that with me and I love it I think it's absolutely perfect in terms of representing the shift that you guys are all experiencing so transitioning to college for parents right um, we want to dig a little bit deeper and think about what are the ways that you are going to engage how are you going to engage with your kiddos um, how are you going to talk about grades? How often could you guys expect to be communicating via text or over the phone? Try out some new things. I would also say try not to call multiple times a day. You can think about them multiple times a day. You can even pray for them multiple times a day, but don't call multiple times a day. Also, when you do talk with your children, I would say you can absolutely share what's happening at home, but it's important that you also not burden them with the things that you are burdened by. So go to your partner, go to your therapist, go to your best friends, but don't um, use your child as your sounding board for the harder things in your life because they are going through some hard things too. And so it's important for you to navigate that boundary and not be leaning on your child for your own emotional support. Um, so here are, we're going to talk a little bit about the four phases of parenthood from an article by Bob Hostetler that was published in Focus on the Family. 
And it says here, no words adequately describe the jumble of emotions a parent experiences driving away from a child's freshman college dorm. It's frightening on so many levels, but it is less frightening if the parent has successfully navigated the first three phases of parenting. So what are those first three phases of parenting? We're gonna talk about that. So phase one is the commander. You are a benevolent dictator. You're basically telling your little munchkins what to do because you need to. They're pretty willful, they're little, they're sassy. Your goal is to encourage growth from discipline, excuse me, towards self-discipline. Then you move into the coach phase. You're gonna teach and model healthy behavior. Your goal is to encourage growth from direction to self-direction. Then phase three, which is where you guys are right now, is the counselor. You wanna help your teens take responsibility in making decisions. You wanna offer suggestions and warn about consequences, but let your teen make the decision as often as possible. And the goal is to encourage your child's growth from dependence to independence. I know this is hard. Then phase four is the consultant. That's where we're heading right now. So parents in this stage, it's so hard you guys, must hope, pray, and wait. Phase four can be the most difficult because it requires a level of letting go. The key phrase is let me know if I can help. It affirms your availability while also respecting your student's independence. The goal here is for your child to become a healthy functioning adult and I know that's what you want for them. Phase four, instead of jumping in to solve those problems, you are acting as a consultant. Your advice is only wanted when it's asked for. So you have to hold it until they ask for it, which is really hard. So this is an opportunity for you to learn some self-discipline in holding back and letting them ask for the help and support when they need it. This is a new season. Everything is shifting from parent to child to parent to adult to adult. And it's difficult not to treat your emerging adult as a teen. Talk about this process with your student. We know that it's hard. It's hard now, and then it's hard again next summer if they come home. Because when they're in your home, you're used to parenting them like a high school student instead of like a college student. So they will have had two semesters of freedom and flexing their wings and finding their boundaries and finding their sleep schedule and getting to classes. And um, it's important for you next summer to think about what that developmental parenting shift looks like at that time. So think about that and talk about that. When I worked at CU Boulder, I often talked with students about talking with mom and dad before you come home about this transition because you have been independent and now you are going back into the house. All right, so talk, 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 communicate about this. All right, so this is Carrie Kubes in Compacus, and I love a couple of her blogs that I've read. This one is prepare the child for the road, not the road for the child. The gist of this is not to be a snowplow parent. When I say snowplow parent, I'm not sure you all know what I mean, but what I mean is a parent who goes out and literally clears all the obstacles on the road. And on the one hand, that seems like maybe it could be a good choice, but in reality, you're stripping the opportunity for your child to go through hard things and build mastery in the safety of your own home. So she says, when we prepare the road for the child, we make their life too easy. We don't allow them to build the life coping skills that they will need down the road to handle life's hard Hard realities. She talks about the difference between little league stress and big league stress, right? We all, it, we all struggle if our child doesn't get chosen for the team or feels left out or experiences some mild bullying, things like that. But those little league stresses, when they're in the safety of our own home, are things that we can come alongside them and help them cope effectively with because eventually they turn into big league stresses. So if we think about failing, writing a failing paper in seventh or eighth grade versus writing, you know, submitting work that is subpar and getting fired from your job, I'd much rather come alongside my child and help them learn a solid work ethic and help them learn how to achieve and function effectively than have them losing their job or getting divorced or those kinds of things because they don't know how to get through hard things. She says, preparing the child for the road means packing their suitcase with care. So I pack my kids' suitcases with love, faith, and affection. I try to save room for resiliency and character, both acquired, both are acquired by facing obstacles and 
disappointments. Every suitcase needs a healthy mix of warm memories and real life lessons. I know their suitcases represent both the security of home and the security of knowing that they can handle hard things. And there will be hard things, right? <laughs> so that's a piece of it. We wanna prepare our children for what is coming. All right, so this is kind of tongue in cheek here, but she says, as our kids grow up, us parents need a life. So before we had kids, I imagined that you had a rich and interesting life with passions and interests and the energy to stay awake past 10 p.m. on a Friday. But having a baby shifts your priorities. Some days back in that era, your only goal is survival. You had to put things on the back burner to conserve your energy. You had to sacrifice things to make room for a new calling. We, however, are living in a generation of parents who are wrapping their lives around their kids, and that can cause trouble with ourselves, our marriages, and the whole family unit. Dr. Madeline Levine, in her book, Teach Your Children Well, says we hunker down and immerse ourselves in our children's activities at the expense of our adult relationships and our own continued development. Decreasing the sphere of our own lives makes us increasingly dependent on our children for a sense of meaning and accomplishment. And that's not fair, right? Our kids carry burdens and they aren't meant to carry the burdens. We are not meant to make them a source of our joy. God wants Jesus to be the ultimate source of our joy. He created us to be Christ-centered parents, not child-centered parents. With Jesus as the center of our universe, we can have hope apart from our kids. We can widen the sphere of our adult lives and define ourselves first and foremost as children of God. So that's really important and it's hard to do. This is not always easy and um, this is a process. So have patience and grace for yourself. So it says here, being a parent is important and we are far more than parents. It is good for your kids to see you as a multifaceted person with your own interests and desires and whatnot. Sissy Goff in Intentional Parenting says, yes, your heart is interconnected with the heart of your child as it should be, but you are still you and they need you to be. They need you to have hope outside of them. And ultimately, of course, any real hope comes from the fact that God has poured out his love into our hearts and into theirs. So another facet here is thinking about communication. How will communication be different if your child is moving out of state? What are the time zones difference look like? Um, if they're around the corner, how often do you expect them to come home for dinner? Those kinds of things. So we wanna think about, I know that this is easier for you guys than them, to not depend only on texting, social media, or email, but to call them and listen to their voice. Now this requires them to answer your phone calls so that you can listen to their voice, but have that talk ahead of time. Find a good time in the week where you can just set a date and talk with them at that time each week so that you know you'll have the opportunity to connect and check in and make that a priority. Ask open-ended questions. Now I know you try this and they don't always meet you in that, but ask open-ended questions so that they can hopefully give you more than yes, no answers. Um, tell them a little bit about what's going on at home, even if they don't stop and ask, and let them know that you're praying for them and supporting them in this new transition. Um, with communication, you also want to notice the time of day that they're communicating with you. If there are too many middle of the night times or texts or whatnot, that may mean they're struggling with sleep or with the self-discipline of getting themselves to sleep. Um, don't overreact if you can't immediately respond to every communication. It may just push them to act independently and develop independence um, and build mastery. One of the things I always say is not to um, over-function on behalf of your children. So if you're worried about your kiddo having an 815 class and whether or not they're going to wake up for it, help them begin the process of learning how to set alarms. And if they need to set multiple alarms, then make sure they have multiple alarms. But don't over function. Don't function in such a way that they are dependent on you for doing the things that need to be done. Encourage them to unplug. I know this is hard, especially in this season, but thinking about this, they will have new opportunities to go to the dining hall and make relationships and go out for coffee and order pizza at midnight and those kinds of fun college things. So making sure that they have some face-to-face -face connections and interactions and not just everything online is important. All right, I love this quote. It says, there are two, there are only two lasting bequests that we can hope to give our children. One is roots. 
I think of deep roots, and the other is wings. So let's think about how to give roots and wings. With roots and wings, you want to make sure they know your home is safe, the door is always open, you are available to consult with them, and wings are really giving them that opportunity to release and let go and fly and find their way in this new world. It's important to think about if your student is having a hard time, whether that's with roommates or boyfriend-girlfriend stuff or whatnot. Um, we do offer support for them. So in terms of how we support those struggling students, we can talk a little bit about what we're doing at the Counseling Center. So we have a department where we are a training clinic. So the majority of our staff are earning either a master's degree or a doctorate in clinical mental health counseling or a master's in counseling or a, doc a doctorate of psychology. So we offer individual therapy, group therapy, support groups, therapy groups. We offer roommate mediations, um, referrals to off-campus providers, and referrals for medication when necessary. So because my staff is in training, they are around for a couple of semesters at a time. And like every other college campus, we have more need than we have resources in terms of therapy. So if you know that your child has had a lot of consistent therapy in the past and wants to meet with someone consistently through college, then we may not be the best place to serve them, but we do have an outstanding referral list of local Christian practitioners in the Denver metro area. So um, we are happy to serve students for a semester or two to support them in their growth and healing, but we're not the place if they need something longer term than that. And we also can't promise the same clinician one semester after another, just based on our staff turnover. Um, reading resources. So everybody bust out your camera and take a picture of these. <laughs> so this is, um, Boundaries by Cloud and Townsend. Y'all could just read this as a family. It's so important thinking about where you end and other people begin and how to ask for things and say no to things. Um, this will help their roommate communications. This will help in their relationships. They also have boundaries in dating, boundaries with teens, boundaries in marriage. They have a whole series. It's great. Um, 10 Things Every Christian Should Know for College is a great book um, thinking about identity and community and whatnot and then Changes That Heal. That, sorry, that graphic is a little pixelated, but Changes That Heal is a great book. It's kind of an introduction to therapy book that you could all be reading, um, thinking about our God and grace and truth and freedom and healing. And then here's some resources for you. So this one, the first one is called Release My Grip, Hope for a Parent's Heart as Kids Leave the Nest and Learn to Fly by Cami Gilmore. Um, the other two are not from a Christian perspective. One is The Campus Cure, A Parent's Guide to Mental Health and Wellness for College Students. And the other one is Letting Go, A Parent's Guide to Understanding the College Years. So there actually weren't a lot of Christian resources in this category. Um, and then in every goodbye, there are seeds of another hello. So it's important that to navigate this stage effectively and to support your students. This is a huge change for them. It's a huge change for you. And we are here to support you. I can take phone calls from parents who are worried, happy to walk you through this process. Um, we know that this is also a little bit this weekend is gonna be like drinking from a fire hose. So have patience with yourself and know that since these are available on video, you should be able to access them another time. We wish you guys all the best as you are beginning this process of sending kids to college. Thank you for your time and thank you for this opportunity. Bye-bye.